All right. Hey, everybody. Dr. Sean Talbot here. Today, we're going to be talking about SIBO, or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It's a big topic these days because uh, so many of us eat so many processed foods um, that uh, that can lead to small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, and it comes to us from a, from a question that I got. What is your advice for people with SIBO who can't handle fiber, polyphenols, fermented food? One of the really frustrating things about SIBO is when you have bacteria growing in the wrong part of your intestines, in the small intestine, in where they shouldn't be, uh, instead of the large intestine, where they really should be. Um, one of the problems is that even when you eat healthy foods, you know, you eat the, you eat the good stuff. Um, it causes problems, right? You can't digest it. It causes you to be bloated. It causes you to feel, you know, brain fog and just fatigued all the time. You just, you just feel, you feel awful. Now, SIBO is different than leaky gut. Leaky gut can lead to a whole host of problems that sound a little bit like what I just described, where you, you know, you might be achy. You might have autoimmune system problems. You might be tired. You might be moody. You know, all that kind of stuff. SIBO is very, very different than leaky gut. And before I should, before before I go any further, I should let you know that on my blog at doctalbit.com, um, I have some very detailed articles about leaky gut, about SIBO, uh, about what I'm going to talk to you about right now, about a whole bunch of other topics around you know the gut-brain axis and mental wellness and things like that. Um, but SIBO is basically growing bacteria in a part of the intestine where they really shouldn't be. Uh, so in the small intestine versus the large intestine. Um, and when, when, when that happens, what you need to do, it's actually a fairly straightforward um, solution, uh, but it's a focus solution. It's something that you have to do for at least two weeks. I like people to do what I call a 14 day gut reset because you really need that focus time in order to go through three really important steps. So the first step is weed. The next step is seed. And then, and the, and the step after that is feed. Uh, so weed, seed, feed. And basically what you're doing is you're getting rid of the bad guys. That's the weed part. You're seeding with the good stuff, and then you're feeding it with the, with the right prebiotics and polyphenols and things like that that help everything grow. So think of it, think of it like, a, like a garden analogy. Um, you can't put the good stuff in there. You can't put the probiotics in there and the prebiotics and that kind of stuff until you've prepared the soil. So I want you to think of it in that kind of a, in that kind of an idea. So for the, for the weed part of it, how do you get rid of the bad guys that are in there? And this bad guy, you know, we call it small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, but it can also involve some yeasts. It can involve other, other fungi. Um, and uh, th this, this same protocol will get rid of the bacteria, get rid of the yeast, you know, what some people call candida. Um, one of the most effective ways to, uh, to alleviate this problem is with essential oils. Uh, now, I know a lot of people from some of the essential oil companies that would take essential oils internally on a regular basis. That's a really, really bad idea. We use essential oils here at Three Waves Wellness <clears throat> to, inf to infuse the atmosphere, right? We'll put, we'll put different combinations of, you know, peppermint oil and clove oil and sorrow and a whole bunch of different things, right? I've traveled all around the world. I collect essential oils from, from wonderful places like Africa and Madagascar and places like that. We bring them back here. We infuse them to, you know, help, help with you know emotional well-being right it's a great great thing to do but when you take them internally they are antibacterial so it's not something you want to do on a regular basis it's something you might need to do on a short term basis right they're like natural antibiotics in a in a in a sense in fact if you went to your regular doctor and they diagnosed you with sibo they would probably give you an antibiotic for you know a week or two uh, to kill off some of the bad stuff. The problem is it also kills off some of the good stuff, and this is why you can't use it long term because it's 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 indiscriminate. You can't use essential oils and hope they just kill the bad guys and not the good guys. They're gonna kill the they're gonna kill the good guys too, unfortunately. But you need to use them sometimes to get rid of the bad guys. So I like to use things like. 
uh, thyme oil, um, we'll use peppermint oil, we'll use neem, we'll use rosemary. There's a, there's a whole bunch of different ones that you can use for a few days, maybe a week to kill off and just, just sort of knock down the E. coli and the salmonella and the yeast and you know all the, all the bad stuff that's there. You can also use things like berberine, you can use garlic. Um, I have on my blog, I've got some recommended products for doing each of these steps, the weed step, the seed step, the feed step. Uh, and you can go there and you can check out those products and see if they're, see if they're the right match for you. Um, so so that's, that's one part of the weed, kill off the bad guys. You also want to take away some of the offending foods. You'll notice if you have SIBO, there are some some kinds of foods that will set you off. Um, and in this in this question, it was asking about fibers and polyphenols and fermented foods. These are, like I said before, are the good foods that are supposed to be feeding your your good bacteria, and they do that in the lower part of your of your gastrointestinal tract, the large intestine, the colon. But before they get there, they have to pass through the small intestine. And if you have bacteria growing at any appreciable level in that part of your of your GI tract, they're going to get those foods first. So a lot of times we call these foods FODMAPs. They, it, it, so FODMAP is a very clunky way to describe it, but it stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. These are the kinds of foods that the bacteria are going to ferment, and that's the source of your, of your bloating and your fatigue and all the sort of symptoms that you get from having SIBO. So you need to get rid of those foods, but only for a short period of time. When you take away those foods, you're going to feel better because you're not, you're not feeding those bad bacteria anymore. You actually might feel worse as they start to die off and they start to go away. That's one of the reasons that we want to do this, this weeding thing to get rid of all those bad guys. So kill them with the essential oils, starve them by removing these foods temporarily. You'll feel better. Then you might feel worse. Then you'll feel better again as those guys get all out of there. Um, and then you can start the seeding process. So within this 14 day um, uh, uh, microbiome reset, you might do this first, this first weeding phase for half that time. So let's say let's say it's a week. Then you can start seeding again. And when you seed, it's all about setting up the right environment. And that's really, really important. If you don't focus on this part, if you just did what a lot of people do is try to take a shortcut and just try to kill off the good guys and put in the bad, put in the good guys, kill off the bad guys and put in the good guys without changing the environment, you're going to find yourself right back with SIBO again, uh, or your client is going to find themselves right back with SIBO again. You really, really have to take that week or so in the middle and reset the environment. And what that means is the environment means, means you're going to be taking digestive enzymes. You're going to be using herbal motility enhancers to make sure the food is moving through the gastrointestinal tract at the appropriate speed. What that what that does overall is it changes the pH environment, the acid-base balance, so that it is slightly acidic. And that slightly acidic environment is going to be preferential for growing good bacteria, and it's going to be disadvantageous to growing bad bacteria. And so what you're going to do is you know, think, think of the atmosphere of a greenhouse. You want to have the right temperature, the right humidity, the right amount of light. It's the same exact kind of an idea in your GI environment, you want to have the right environment to encourage the growth of the good ones and, and discourage the growth of the bad ones. Um, and you know you can you can use intermittent fasting to do that because when you do fasting, it activates this this phenomenon in your gut called the migrating motor complex, which basically pushes the bacteria down from the upper part of your GI tract and the middle part of your GI tract into the lower part of your GI tract. So again, it's all about changing this environment and rebuilding that solid foundation that when it's time to feed at the end or the you know towards the end of that 14 day reset um, um, window then you can start putting in the good stuff then you can start you can start using different strains of probiotic bacteria you can start combining those in a symbiotic synergistic way with prebiotic fibers uh, and in my blog I've got I've got some specific uh, specific uh, strains of bacteria specific prebiotic 
fibers that I that I'd like you to check out. I'm not going to I'm not going to rattle them all off right now. They've got big long names. It's easier for you to read them than not. But you really have to follow that weed, get rid of the bad guys. Feed with uh, <laughs> weed seed feed. The weed is getting rid of the bad guys. The seed is setting up that environment, tilling the soil, so to speak. So you have the right environment and then feed by adding back the right strains of probiotics and the right prebiotic fibers to nourish them. So don't make the mistake that a lot of people do is go out and get any old generic strains of, of, of probiotic bacteria, because again, you're going to find yourself right back in a, in a SIBO situation. You want to get the right ones that are going to become resident in the lower part of your GI tract. You're going to make sure you get ones that help build up your mucus lining. You're going to want to get ones that help with gut transit time, you know, some that some that will help with constipation, some that will help with diarrhea. You're going to maybe want get you know, maybe get some that help with mineral absorption. You're going to help yeah, get, get some that help with uh, uh, immune system vigilance. Um, and all of those, when you put them all together, it, the, the, the idea is that you've gotten rid of the bad guys, you've set up the good environment to be hospitable to growing these bacteria, and then you can really go in there and populate them. So it takes about two weeks of really focused attention. Uh, and if you do that, it's actually it's actually a pretty straightforward process that is really, really effective. Don't go you know, one day in and then stop. Don't go a one week in and then stop. Go the whole 14 days. As I describe on the blog, on, on the blog article, you'll be able to go in there and see exactly Exactly. Here's what I do in the first week. Here's what I do in the second week. Here are the products that I'm adding. Here are the th foods that I'm taking away. Here are the, the fibers that I'm adding back and when I'm adding them back. And then once your SIBO is gone, the best part about it is that you're going to go, wow, that was really well worth it because now my brain fog is gone. Now my fatigue is gone. Now my bloating is gone. Now I feel lighter. I feel more energetic. I feel sharper and have better clarity of thinking. That's exactly what you want. And that's what you're lacking when you have SIBO. That's what you're going to regain when you go through the 14-day reset. Okay. So thanks a lot for checking this out and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.